this lesson is a lot less theory and more and more of just fun puzzle doing but it's going to build on some concepts that came up in the first four so if you made it up to lesson uh, five i think you'll enjoy this one puzzle number eight is one of the most famous puzzles really ever made is it used to be called the 15 puzzle and the idea behind the 15 puzzle is you've got uh, the numbers from 1 to 15 and you have this black square which is sort of the blank and it's it's an actual physical puzzle where things can slide but mine doesn't slide um, but if you if you take uh, a number that's either above below left or right of the blank like here the 7 and I click on it it will move into the blank spot so if the blank spots in the corner there's sort of two moves you could make if the blank spots on the edge, like it is here, I could put the 4 in there, the 11 in there, or the 7 in there. And if the blank spot is not on the edge or the corner, there's four moves. So in this case, I could put the 6 there, or I can move the 11 there, or the five, 15 there, or the 10 there. So at any given time, there are, uh, there's either two, three, or four legal moves. And it seems that each move is a swap. Because you can go sort of, you can swap something with the blank if it's left, right, up or down from it. Otherwise, you can't. So it's a very limited number of moves, and I, I'm going to recommend that you just uh, push pause and spend an hour, two hours, a couple of days, whatever it is you need to like go through this puzzle and see what sorts of observations you can have about it uh, on your own, and then come back to this video. So go ahead and do that now. Welcome back. Um, as you see a puzzle like this, um, <clears throat> as you play around with it, let's see what happens if you try to get the one into the very top spot. So you, you have to get the blank sort of above it in order to get the one in that spot. And this two needs to kind of move up. So I'm kind of forcing the blank to be above it. Now the three is all the way over here. So I'm going to go like that. If I want to get the blank above it. But here's our first sort of problem in this game. After you get one, two, and three, if you try to get the four in there, it seems like anything that gets the four in there moves the three out. Anything that gets the three back moves the four out. And already there's like a, a complication. And to resolve that, I'm going to tell you the secret of the 15 puzzle. Uh, the secret of the 15 puzzle is that although it looks like the fundamental move is swapping a number with a blank that's left, right, up, or down from it. Actually, the fundamental move is like this. You have, um, let's put the blank in the bottom corner there. The fundamental move is here I have 11, 7, and 10 in those positions. It's, it's position 11, 11, 12, and 15. The fundamental move is actually this. It's a three cycle. It put the 11 where uh, the 7 was and the 7 where the... 10 was and the 10 where the 11 was. And now I can do it again. And now I can do it again. If you start looking at the puzzle that way, as and you can do these three cycles, you could cycle any three, like here, let's say the 14, the 13, and the 12 over here. If I, if, if I want to three cycle those, I just get the blank into the fourth spot, and then I can cycle around those three. So if you if you think of it in those terms, uh, in order to get the 4 up where the 9 is, I need to kind of bring this thing down, and I can cycle these numbers around, but again, that moves the 3 out. So what I'm going to do is first get the 3 out of the way. I kind of move the one, the 1 down and the 2 and 3 over. Now I can cycle the 4 to where the 9 is, and now I can bring those things back. Okay, the next complication is going to come in after we get the 5 and the 6, and the 7. Now I'm going to bring this 8. He's going to make his way over. And again, the trick is, if I think of it as a 3 cycle, but my 7 is in my cycle with my 8, so I'm just going to kind of move this over, put the 5, 6, and 7, slide them over. Now I can cycle the 8, 11, and 14 around. Then I can bring back the 5, 6, 7. Now it's going to, we're going to run into a problem in a second, which is if I go ahead and get the 9 and I get the 10, 
and I try now to get the 11, I'm going to run into trouble here because the 12, I'm not able to, I'm able to do that same trick, 9, 10. I guess I could get the 12 there, but then I'm going to run into a problem here with the 13 and 14 and 15 are kind of messed up and, you know, how do we get them there? So uh, the way I think of this puzzle is not, I don't try to get 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, what I try to do, I do like to get the 9 and the 10 next to each other. Then I bring them over here on the side, and I bring the 13 next to the 9. And now I have 9, the 9 and the 10 and the 13 are in the right place. And then there'll be these last four numbers, the 14, the 15, the 11, and the 12. And there's basically 12 things that can happen at this point. If you, if you get the 9, the 10, and the 13 in their spots, where we, we end up with 12 configurations that um, can happen. I want to take you through the strategy behind those. So I'm going to start with uh, the first one. So one of the 12 possibilities is this. And if, if that happens, well, then the puzzle's done because the 11, the 12, the 14, and 15 just needs to get moved over. So that's configuration number one. There are 11 others, and they do get more complicated. But uh, the next four configurations all have the same strategy to them. I'm going to take you through that, those one at a time. In this configuration, what I want you to notice is that the 11 is already in its proper place. And if the 11 is already in its proper place, uh, and the other three numbers, the 14, 12, and 15, aren't, what we wish we could do is just cycle them around. We want the 12 to go where the 14 is, the 14 to go where the 15 is, and the 15 to go where the 12 is. So if the 11 is already in the right place, all you have to do is make the blank space, move the 11 over. Now I can cycle these three guys around and then bring the 11 back, and now I'm done. And that, I'll call that uh, case number two. In case three, again, I have the 11 in the right spot. It's just the 12, the 15, and the 14 that need to get sort of three cycled. So by moving the 11 over, it makes way for the space here. Then I can cycle around the 12, the 15, and the 14, bring the 11 back, bring the 10 up, and that is case number three. In case four, and also case five, it's the 14 that's in the right spot. See how that 14 is right where it needs to go, kind of next to the 13? But the 11, 12, and 15 need to be cycled around. In this one, the 11 wants to go where the 15 is, so I need to do like a counterclockwise cycle on that 11, 12, and 15. So uh, for case number four, I'll just, uh, the 11 wants to go where the 15 is, and the 15 wants to go where the 12 is. So I bring the 14 over to make room to do my three cycle, and then bring the 14 back, and that takes care of case number four. In case five, again, the 14 is in the right place, but now the 11, 12, and 15 need to be cycled uh, clockwise. So I just move the, the 14 over, cycle the 11, 12, and 15, move the 14 back, or don't, just move the 15 there, and that takes care of case number five. Now there are still seven more cases, and the next six cases, uh, what they have... Uh, Cases 2, 3, 4, and 5 all had either 11 or 14 in the right position. Uh, in these next six cases, neither 11 nor 14 are in their proper position. And for these six cases, uh, one of them is on the edge of the board, in this case the 11, whereas the 14 is not on the edge of the board. So for... Uh, for case number six, and this one is a little bit tricky. The idea is, I really wish either the 11 or the 14 were in the right spot so that I'd be on cases two, three, four, or five, but they're not. Um, since the 11's on the edge, I can easily get the 11 
to where it wants to be, which is where the 14 is, by moving the 15 over, allowing me to do this counterclockwise 3 cycle. And now what's happened is it's actually turned into uh, case, case 6 has uh, turned into case 2. So I can finish it up. Um, the 11 is already in the right spot, so I can finish it up by cycling those guys around. So um, it took twice as many moves. It took about 10 moves instead of the 5 because it basically turned from case 6 into case 2. In case 7, again, the, neither the 11 or the 14 are in their right spot, but since the 11 is on the edge of the board, I can easily get the 11 into its proper spot by moving the 12 over and doing it counterclockwise. And now it's actually turned into case number 3. The 11 is in the right place, so I kind of move it over and cycle those three things around. And that takes care of case 7. Again, 7 became case 3, it took, and it took about took five moves to turn it into case three, and then it took five moves to finish it. In case eight, again, <clears throat> neither the 11 or the 14 are in their right spot. Uh, the 14, though, is on that right-hand edge. Um, I think the 11's on the edge, but that's not what I mean. I, I should have said before, on, the, on that right-hand edge. So it's easy for me to get the 14 to its proper spot by moving this 15 over and cycling these three guys around. Now the 14's in his right spot, and this actually turns into case number. Uh, actually turns into case number four. The 14's in its right spot. I need to cycle the 11, 12, and 15 counterclockwise. So I will do that, and that ends. That's the end of case number eight. In case nine, again. Neither the 11 or the 14 are in their right spot, but since the 14 is on the right-hand edge, I could easily get 14 to its spot it wants to be in, which is where the 11 is. In order to do that, I move the 12 over to this counterclockwise 3 cycle, and now I've turned this in to uh, actually case number 5. The 14 is in its right place, so I move him over and do a clockwise cycle on the 11, 12, and 15. It has only three more cases left. In this one, uh, the 11 and the 14, neither of them are in their right spot, and they're both on that right edge of the board. So I have a choice here. I could either get the 11 into his right spot or the 14 into his right spot, and then do this process again. But I'm just going to do the uh, put the... I have a choice here, just wanted to let you know you could do this either way, but I'm going to choose to put the 11 into his right spot. And now that the 11 is in its right spot, it actually is turned in to case number 5. So I want to cycle the 12, 15, and 14, or 12, 14, 15, sort of counterclockwise, so move the 11 over, cycle those. Okay, and that does it. Uh, for case 10. Oh, I, I just said that case 10 turned into case 5, but it actually turned into case 2 after those first five steps. Case 11, again, it's the 11 and the 14. They're neither of them in their, in their right spot. And I actually have a choice here. And I could either put the 11 to his right spot as my first five moves and then cycle around the other three, or I could put the 14 in. I just prefer to put the 11 into its right spot, so I'm going to do that. Now that the 11 is in its right spot, this actually turns into case 3. The 11 is in his right spot. I need to cycle around the 12, 14, 15. So I'm going to do that. And that takes care of case number 11. And now, as far as I can tell, the hardest case, case 12. You see the first case Case 1 took no moves, and case 2, 3, 4, and 5 took about 5 moves, and case 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 took around 10 moves. But this one's going to take around 15 moves. The issue here is that 
the 11 is in 14's position, and the 14 is in 11's uh, position. So what what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to do a three cycle just to get they they need to, one of them needs to be on the right hand side. So uh, what I'm going to do is move the 11 over, and then I'm going to cycle uh, around these three guys to get the 14 onto the edge. And now what's happened is that it's turned into uh, it's turned into case uh, turned into case nine. Now case nine with the 14 all the way on the right, I can get the 14 into the position where the 11 is by cycling those around. And now it's turned into uh, it's turned into case five. The 14 is in his right place, so I can. Uh, cycle the 11, 12, and 15. Okay, and that takes care of all 12 cases. Uh, it is a really fun puzzle. I'll have some more things to say about it in another video, but definitely it's a, it's a fun puzzle to do. Let's see how fast I can do it. Just to mess around, got the one. Sometimes I'm kind of looking over at some of the other numbers as I make these decisions, but just find it fun. I like to put the one, two, and three like that. That gives me enough room to maneuver the four in. Get the five. I see that six. Might as well get him involved. Five, six. There's the seven. I'm going to need to move those guys over. Whoops. So I'm going to bring this nine up here. I'm going to bring the six, seven, and eight to give me room to maneuver the nine in. Now I got the, whoops, that's that's wrong, five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm going to get the nine and ten together. Just make sure the ten is to the right of the nine. Um, my goal is getting the nine, ten, and the thirteen in their right places. So I put the nine and ten, I tuck them away there. That allows me to bring the thirteen around. And now look at look what I'm looking at. This uh, is, I don't know, the scenario is memorized. This is actually scenario number two. The eleven's already in its right spot. So cycle around. 12, uh, 14, and 15, and it's done. So with practice, you should be able to do that puzzle in less than a minute every single time, and I hope you have fun with that puzzle.